All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, I'm back inside the studio. I've got one of my major plein air pieces that you would have seen me paint if you watch my videos. If not, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. Had a great time out in the bush painting this particular piece and all the other works that went along with it, a great journey. Now I've got the work back in the studio, is the best time to analyze it. When you're working direct from the subject, trying to capture the moment in time, the atmospheric feeling, the colors and tones, and being out there on location really allows you to get those correct colors. You can see the colors that are out there, you can feel the energy of the place, and it allows you to put them in spontaneously. And you try and put it in as accurately, accurately sorry, as you can, but the thing is, because you're pressed for time, because the light's changing, there'll be a rugged accuracy about your work. I'm trying to be as accurate as I can the whole time, but at the same time, I'm trying to paint as fast as I can. So what you end up with is almost like a perfect imperfection, where it seems like you've captured the day, but everything is slightly imperfected, and there's something really nice about that. Now when you get the work home, the basic colors and tones that are there, now I stand back and I analyze it, and I have a look and see if I'm getting the flow of the composition. Because you've got to realize that when you're on site, You've got two eyes and you're looking at the world in a three-dimensional way. You can see everything separated because you're actually getting two slightly different pictures from each eye computed into your brain. That's giving you separation between things and the whole landscape. You close one eye while you're out there and quite often a lot of things will end up flatter. They'll sit against each other. You can't see that separation. So we've got a two-dimensional surface here of what we saw in the three-dimensional world. So now what I need to do is make sure that I can get the same sort of flow and read that I got when I was out there, now that I'm only on a two-dimensional surface. Okay, so what I'm finding in this particular piece, I've stood back and I've stated it, because the thing is, the worst thing you can do is bring a painting home and overwork it. You do not want to do that. There's something really nice about the freshness and the spontaneity. So now the idea is to finish it, get it flowing right, but try not to overwork it. And the work that you do do, try and keep it the same sort of energy, the same spontaneity that you did on the day. All right, okay, so I'm feeling like there's a log coming out here into the water. Now I'm feeling, because, like I said, it's a flat surface, the colors and tones behind it and in front of it and itself are almost the same, so it's actually blending in. It's very hard to see. When I was standing out there in nature, it was very easy to see the separation. Okay, so now what I've got to do is, I want that to be in one of the focal areas, so what I want to do is clarify that by almost separating it a little bit from the background so the two jump out that little bit. Once we've got that, then the idea is this particular piece, in my mind, the composition flows like so. You start here and you flow in this way and you come up to this point here and so that's kind of like the first major subject. And then from here, you've got options where you could go. You could flow more up to this gum tree on the far right, but in my opinion, that's a little bit too far right to place too much major emphasis. You could shoot straight across over to here, but in my mind, that's a little bit too far that way to place your major emphasis for your next subject. So my feeling is when I stand back and have a look, I feel like that as you flow into here, the next place you would like to go, it's not so much here because you get stuck, you won't be able to flow through the rest of the painting, but go to here, and then maybe here. And then from there, as your eyes go like so, they roll up to here, and once they've rolled up to here, then they can spread out almost like a mushroom and they can view the rest of the painting. So, place a bit of finish and emphasis here in tonal variance and color and detail, just there. Next one comes here, just place a little bit more of emphasis and finish here so your eyes flow to there. Once you're in a comfortable position in the picture, you're off center, you're not too far to the left though. You're flying across, then you've got plenty of room to, for your eyes and brain to spread out and enjoy the rest of the work because you've been held in the work by the composition and you're flowing around. Like I said, finish that one too much and don't place enough detail here. You'll jump here, you'll jump across there, then your eyes will have trouble flowing along this area because there's nothing to draw your attention. Okay, A different one, play that down thinking about finishing this instead. Now the problem with that is you'll come into here, your eyes will jump straight to there and then they'll get stuck. They won't want to go that way because there's nothing to look at. So the idea is go in, go across and then spread out. And so you'll have a few major subjects in your painting. And those major subjects, then everything else harmonizes with those subjects and echoes them, okay? So 
once you've gone to here, you've got a nice major play of detail, but then everything else is kind of similar, but not competing with it. It's just echoing it. So it feels like it's celebrating the main subject. It's a bit like the cyclists in the Tour de France. You've got a whole team of cyclists and they're all working for their best cyclists to win. And it's the same with this. Your focal points, everything else in the painting is helping that main focal point win the picture for your eyes to go through to it. So these things here will echo the main pieces. All right, enough said, let's get the paint out, start splashing it around, and I'll explain what I'm thinking and what I'm doing as I go. Okay. All right, I'm pretty excited. I cannot wait to get into this. So let's get the gear out and make a start. I might put the darkest darks in, so I'll get some red into that. Just going to establish what's going to go where. Fruity and green, a bit of red. Just trying to get some real darks with some complementary colours. So I've got the reds and the greens together there to really pump that. All right, now we've got it all set up, ready to go. I've got the paint out, got the palette knives, got everything ready. Okay, now I feel like just here, this is that trunk that's out into the water. Now I've missed out a little bit on the reflection here, so I'm just going to emphasize a few little tones there, all right? So let's, the beauty is I've got the colors here already to deal with. I don't have to make the colors up, I've just got to match them. Okay, so I'll go for a bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre, a little bit of Viridian green. So it's kind of like the green color of the natural green color of the water is reflecting back up into here and reflecting kind of a green shadowy light under there. So that'll be also reflected under here into the water itself. All right, let's just have a look what we got. Just... Just placing some of the marks in like so. Right, now... What we need there is I might just grab a bit of paper towel just to soften it. I'm not really using brushes as in when I'm painting with palette knife I don't use brushes except I may use the rigger and I may get into that later if I want a little bit of detail. Riggers are great for drawing detail in the trunks. What I might do here though is just get my finger, just smudge this a little bit. Now I'm not using toxic colours here so it's not too bad to do this I hope. <laughs> I I like to work with all the colours, the earthy tones and whatever. I don't use a lot of cad when I'm using cadmium colours, I don't really get my fingers involved with those sort of colours because I know that they're toxic, so we don't do that. But when it comes to some of these, just these earthy colours, I don't mind uh, a little bit of smearing here and there. Right, so we've got that. Okay. I'll just keep going a little bit more with that. I'll just add, we've got a few dark tones just in here. Let's have a look. Just keep pulling those tones. Just like so, a little bit of that blue. Greens, just trying to match the colours that I can already see in the painting itself. Softening a little bit here and there, obviously. Bit of red, there's a bit of nice red in that. I'll put that because it's a nice complementary colour of the water. 
We can get it on, there we go. All right. Just a little bit of smearing here and there. Soften it because the water is very much a reflection, a softer version. So, all right, there we go. All right, a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. Just a little bit there to mimic what we've got going on here, as I was saying earlier. All right, so we're already starting to get a little bit more of that reflection and that log's already starting to stand out a little bit more. Okay, so that's a good thing. That's what we're after. Now, just the odd blade of grass too, maybe a bit of yellow ochre. What I'll make up is I'll get a bit of this uh, Viridian green, which is quite a dark green. I'll put some pure white with it and actually make it a light green. So there's just white and Viridian green. A real strong stinging colour. If I half mix that with yellow ochres, I get a very strong grassy type tone. You don't need a lot of the green with it. Now that gives you a nice grassy tone. The occasional knife on the edge for a blade of grass just to start to pick out a little bit of the details. Where light meets dark is quite often a good area to put uh, detail because your eyes will be drawn to that. As soon as you put a bit of detail in that area, you feel like there's detail in the rest of the painting. It seems to work like that. So it's almost like you're giving your, your mind a clue to what's going on. And then your mind can go, right, I know what's going on. Now I'll, I'll work with that theory. Mix fast to get this stuff happening. Mix a little bit of that with that. Yeah, that's it. So there's more. There's more of that kind of ochery colour of the morning light because there's still a little bit of morning light left. You're right, that's kind of making sense. Now I might go change tax a bit and go for the uh, pure white, titanium white. A little bit of cad yellow deep, so it's like an orange yellow. Half mix it, get quite a strong colour out of that by just half mixing the yellow and whatever together. Now, the important part here is knowing what to put in, and knowing what to leave out. Just with a knife on the edge and just strengthening up some of these tones. Bit of variety here and there, block of colour here, a bit of whatever there. I'm using a lot of broken colour in this picture, so I've got a lot of small marks, even though I'm using a big knife, I've got a lot of small marks, everything's broken. Edges are broken, lost and found. Same with the trunks, you don't want to have too much of a straight line, just break it up with the trunks. So the eye can flow, and it's how you would see it in nature anyway, even though the trunk is a continual thing, Sometimes there's shadows crossing the trunk, sometimes there's pure light, so everything gets broken up. There's leaves crossing the trunk. It looks more natural, more realistic if you break it up and allows your eyes to flow through the picture in a more painterly way, so. Seems to be the way to go, all right. Just get a bit more paint on that. Open that up. All right, a bit more of the yellows and whatever. Strengthen that up. Just throw a few in. I'll take some of them out. I'm just putting a few in so I can get back and have a look and say, yeah, that's working, that's what I want, or that's not what I want. And the beauty is now, I can just get a bit of a, a bit of a terpsy rag and rub bits off if I find that I've overdone it. So I'll stand back and have a look. Burn Sienna.
All right, now I'm going to break out this rigger. Now, this is the brush I was telling you about. It's got fantastic long hairs, very fine brush. It's great for drawing wet on dry branches. When I'm painting on site, obviously I'm using oil. It takes forever to dry, so it's wet on wet the whole time I'm painting out, out in the bush. But now that she's dry, uh, it's really good to get refining marks, but still very spontaneous with this rigger. So she can dance around on top of the blues there and it'll be all of a spontaneous feel, wet on dry. When I'm painting on site, I find that that gets a bit sort of lost in the thick paint, so it's way better to use the palette knife on edge for that sort of stuff. All right, so we've got some titanium white, cad yellow deep half mixed. Then I'm just gonna dance it around a little bit. Holding to the very end of the brush and sort of swirling around here and there, so we get a nice, a nice effect. Spontaneous, just like it was on the day. Maybe a little bit here, you just gotta play it. You can add, you can take away, because see, if you don't put enough in, you don't want to be hesitant because you're trying to paint like you were on the day, as fast as you can, but accurate. You can put some in. The beauty is you can take it out if you think, oh no, I don't like what I've done, I've overdone it, so. Just a little bit here and there, we'll just see what we got. A bit more of the white, a bit more of the yellow half mixed. Okay, immediately I can see I've overdone a bit, so I want to take bits off. Got a Turpsy rag. Just going to clean. You can get a real fine line with the Turpsy rag, because you might have thick paint that you've just put on, a little bit too thick for what you want. Very easy to make it thin now by just rubbing at the edge of it. Like I just did with that piece. Take some completely out there, so you get the lost and found edges again. The knife on edge, take that one out too. So you've got to play a play of what you want. It's not just it's a it's kind of a game of feel. You put it in and then now uh, you take them away. Like that one there to me too continual, so I'm gonna break it up by completely taking that piece out. So now you've got the white line, it's broken and then it's off again, it's going again. That's more of a dancing feel in your eyes, and I feel like that's more how you see it in nature and also breaks it up and makes it more painterly. Right. I feel like I need a bit more blues. Okay, so immediately I feel like there's a lot more going on. So now I haven't spent a lot of time painting, but I've spent tons of time thinking about this before I ever did one mark. It's very important to have a concept, knowing what you're going to do before you start. Don't just start throwing paint on and see what happens. Like I said, I had a concept about getting those reflections in there, building it up a little bit more so I could see it and understand what's going on. And I wanted to pull the eye out to here. Rather than placing emphasis on some of these other trees, I wanted to make this more of a subject here. So I've done, I've done that, but I haven't done a lot of work, but it's very important all the work was done in my head visually a couple of weeks ago or a week ago when I was checking it all out and trying to work out exactly how I could make this painting read better. And so now I feel like it has improved it, it's finished it a bit more, it's pulling your eyes around, but at the same time I do not want to overwork it. There's something really nice about the painting the way it was. I could have left it the way it was, but I feel like I could have just pushed it that little bit further, and it is good to experiment, that's how you improve. If you can see something, just go with that. If there's something that you like that you think, if I build on that just a tad more, I'll take it to that newer level. And sometimes you will, and sometimes you won't, so... But you never know unless you've had a go at it. So have a go, if it doesn't work, take it off. That's the good part about the reworks in the studio is because it's wet on dry, you completely can take it back off and you've got no worries. So even working on site, have a go. If you think what I've just done to that painting just then, I changed it a bit, it's really working. I'm going to push it a bit further, see if I can do it. Sometimes you lose it, sometimes you win. So there you go. All right, now I might just stand back and analyse a little bit more. I just think about the composition and we'll get back to you. Let's have a look. Right, now I might just grab a few of these light tones, white, 
Okay, just drop a little bit in here. Let's grab that rag. Almost take it away. So you've put some on and you've taken it away and you've softened. Just trying to bring that trunk out a bit more, like I said, that main feature in there, make it stand out a bit more. So I've got a little paint on the edge. Maybe pick out the edge here and there a little. It's all very subtle stuff. But like I said, it's allowing the the mind, and we'll get some burnt sienna and yellow ochre just to match that. It's allowing the mind to see the two dimensional surfers look more like it was in the three dimensional world, separating the background from the tree itself. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white. Just going to darken it a little, a bit more burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Just want to put a little bit in here. A bit of a green with it. Just to make it a softer turn between a softer turn between the shadow and the trunk itself. So you get more of the feeling of a, a round trunk. Have more of a soft blend as it rolls around. Take a little bit off. So you can see I'm using different techniques to the plain air techniques because normally I don't get a rag out when I'm painting the plain air. Rub it around with the palette knife. I might scrape it back and away I go again. With this one I'm applying a bit to get the softness. Because you're getting wet on dry, I want the same softness and the smearing impasto smoothness that you get wet on wet on site. So the only way to get that now, because I've got quite a texture on the canvas, if I drag this around it's going to be quite dragged and dry brush stroke look if you like. So to give that same wet on wet soft look I've got to actually get the rag out and, and rub these things and that smears it like it's wet on wet. Okay. Why don't we just get a little bit of our ultramarine blues magenta, white, make it that nice light tone, so a little bit more magenta, so it's blue red, it's got a bit of a, it's a red blue sorry, the magenta's got a bit of red in it, so what I'm doing is I'm matching the colours, now I'm trying to separate that main trunk like I said from the background and in some ways there's a bit of a shadow casting this tree out onto the water. The morning light has cast these long blue shadows across the water itself. In some ways by placing it here could help to separate it. Just lightly smear it, lightly put it in. help to separate that trunk from the background. The knife on edge, just building up some of the intensity of the chroma in the shadows that are cast across the water. All right, well we're getting there, getting there. Okay, now, just going to keep working on that trunk. Just pull it up a little bit, I reckon. Just, let's really try and bring this up. This is where you go by feel. Just putting a bit of yellow with it. Really trying to make that stand out now. I'm deciding that that is working by pulling that main trunk out. It's allowing your eyes to dance around like I want them to. Oh, focal in that area. Now I'm doing some... Knife work on edge to put some refine, refinement here. Pulling your eyes in with the detail. So you've got to know where to put the detail and where to leave the detail out. Let's just 
with a knife on edge and some pure white we'll put some tiny little white highlights just like almost as if uh, the glistening sunlight is just capturing in places and just flicking on the water and giving that beautiful white highlight so let's pull that in that whole area is way more finished now but when you get up close it still has that spontaneous look like the original picture up close was very loose and spontaneous and almost abstract still that's very similar but now it's tricked the eyes into thinking that it's a trunk in the water it's much more obviously a trunk which is the whole idea of the painting up close it's about paint and get back it's about the real world okay knowing how much to put in is the real key here and how to apply it apply it the same way with the confidence that you would have done on site and the reason you say confidence on site is you haven't got time to do anything else so by doing that just got the knife on edge here just a few flickers across yeah that's pulling your eyes in that's good I'm liking that I'll stand back and check it out later Okay, a bit more of that white and cad colour. Now I've got some highlights up there, so I'll just put a little bit in the water. So it's mimicking it with a slight echo. Maybe some there too. Just pulling up a little bit of refinement to pull your eyes in. Some what more white? Cads. Pull like so. Bit of a turpsy rag. Just want to clean this edge up. Really clean that. Now this, you want to make sure the painting's dry when you're doing this because if the painting's only skin dry, it's quite thick paint and if you uh, rub too much with rags and all that, you'll get an old sticky mess, the skin will brust open. Here's where you've got the original paint coming through and all sorts of dramas, believe me, I've done it. So now it's good, I can get plenty of, I can put pressure on there when I'm cleaning it up with my finger, but at the same time, I'm not wrecking the underlayer too much because it's dry. There, so I'm just putting that log in. some green, some spontaneous thick paint really thickly laying it on there at the moment trying to really create a contrast between this underfinished stuff and finished and contrast between thin paint and thick paint really trying to pull the eyes up into here and I feel like now by the fact that this is raw linen and completely unpainted it's slowly making its way into detail so it leads your eyes into the painting if you stuck too much detail down these corners for example your eyes would tend to go there instead so you use the linen to your advantage I've got it not painted at all here a bit of paint and now really starting to build up some refining finishing marks like I said finished within reason like up close that still looks like abstract blobs but as soon as you get back that gives the illusion of blades of grass and whatnot okay and like I've done here, the softness allows the sharpness of these trunks to stand out. So these trunks, as I put them in, are quite a hard, sharp edge. But at the same time, if you want that sharp edge to stand out more of an accent, it's quite good to put soft near it, because soft and hard is a contrast. So the hard edges actually look softer. Sorry, the hard edges actually look harder because of the softness. 
And that softness actually looks softer because of the hardness of that. So it gives you that contrast again and draws your eye in and helps it finish it. Now that I'm starting to get a fair bit of finish through this area, the eyes really are getting drawn into here and drawn across there. Now I feel like I just need a little bit more maybe out here, like a little bit of something because it can't be too played down. Like it's got to be a beautiful blend between highly finished, half, half finished, the whole works. Because if you make that too finished and all of a sudden things over here, because what you're doing a painting, every, every time you touch the painting, you're going to alter the whole painting. What may have looked finished enough over here before, now looks too unfinished because this is much more refined. So what I'll do is I'll just finish some of these areas a little bit just by throwing a little bit of this and that in. That'll just pull it up a little bit, make it look a little bit more finished, but not compete with that. Just help celebrate the fact that that's a beautiful thing. And this is echoing it. I just love painting this size. Painting this size, you just got to work so much faster than you would work. A little bit of down here for the reflection. I'll keep going with that theory, a little bit of white, a little bit of cads, just to make a high keyed colour. Just put a little bit more here. Nice one here. Paint was a bit too chunky, so what I'll do is, I'll just get rid of some of it and help create a bit of a line there for a trunk. So we're finishing her off a little bit, not too much. This is still, this is still standing out more than that flowing through. It's almost like a mushroom, but we're coming in like this. Eyes are coming into the picture, not getting too carried away out there, out there. They're going in, going around, and that's like an explosion of mushrooms, explosion. Here we are there, and then we can go out into the painting. So it's flow across, flow up, flow out. Get your eyes to dance all around the work then. And this area being played down is still beautiful and subtle, but the fact it's played down is helping these areas jump out, as we was doing here. This being highly finished is looking much more highly finished because of the fact that this is not finished at all. And that being not finished is really making that jump out as finished. So when I finished that, I had to get a blend, like I said, make this a little bit more finished, but not too much more. That's why I've got to keep getting back and analyzing. So you feel you've got the right flow and the right blend of finish to no finish, hard and soft, leading the eye through the picture how you want it, everything else. All right, well, I feel like that's it. Obviously, I could keep on going for the next two weeks, but I won't because the painting is about a beautiful day, the spontaneity of capturing it on that day, and not overworking it, but still getting a beautiful flow in the painting. All right, I'll get that camera off so you can have a look up close and we can compare what we've done and uh, we'll take it from there. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Hit that notification bell. That way you'll be made aware of all these videos as I upload them. And if you like the video, share it to your mates and give the thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. Till next time, I'll see you later.
play some white to, in the, where the light's hitting the branches. Got a knife on edge to get details. Believe it or not, I'm going to go to a slightly smaller knife. 